Welcome home, Rain. I see you were able to find the rest of your classmates. Yeah, this is everyone. It sure wasn't easy. <laughs> the winds were on our side this time. Indeed. Regardless, we wouldn't have been able to make it here if not for you all coming to find us. Thank you. <laughs> and naturally, that goes for you too, Celine. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's good to see you guys again. It sounds like there was some trouble along the way, but you came back, and that's all that matters. I can't say I'm surprised to find you're in good health, though. Ill weeds grow apace, after all. <laughs> I could say the same about you. Given how useless you are at anything you can't learn from a book, part of me expected we would next meet with you behind bars. Again. <sighs> it hasn't even been 30 damn seconds and I already want to kill you. Okay, my turn! Aww, why'd you move out of the way? Because you were trying to hug me, obviously. Oh, come on. You know you want to. While I'd expected you to come back with your classmates, I didn't think you'd come back with Sarah, too. Not that anything had ever happened to you, of all people. Uh, thanks. I guess. <laughs> Certainly has gotten lively around here. <laughs> it sure has. You're looking a lot better, Dad. I'm still a ways from being back to my old self, but I'm finding it a lot easier to walk around. Toval and Captain Claire have kindly been handling both the village's security and correspondence with the other regions. Which means I can focus on my health. <laughs> We're not doing anything special, really. We're just glad that you've been getting better. That's not true at all. You've done so much for us, I don't even know where to begin thanking you. And Reen, I want you to know that we're both so proud of what you've accomplished. It couldn't have been easy coming this far, but you did it. You should hold your head high. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Oh, I wouldn't have been able to do any of it alone. It was only possible because everyone was with me. <laughs> well... I think we've been standing out here long enough. I've had rooms prepared for you all at the Phoenix Wing, so go ahead and rest there. Oh, nice. Isn't that where we stayed during our last visit? That's the one. I imagine you must all be exhausted after all that's transpired in the past few days. The open-air bath's finally been repaired, too. If you get the chance, you should enjoy a nice, relaxing bath after all your hard work.
Milliam! I didn't think anyone else would come here so late at night. Sorry, I'll get out now. Aw, why would you want to do that? I came in because the manager told me you were here. Really? Springs in winter are so nice. That funny tingly thing you get in your feet once they start warming up feels so comfy. Y yeah, true. Winter's my favorite time of the year to use the springs because of how relaxing it is. But never mind that. This is weird. Us being in the springs together this late at night is just. I mean. Oh, things getting too steamy for you? Ah, <laughs> oh, don't worry. I know it's not every day you get to share a bath with a sexy, tall drink of water like me. Or do you want to hang out with Sarah or Emma instead? Can't blame you because they both got big boots. Nope, that is not what I'm saying at all. Uh, you really know how to make people jump through hoops. Moving right along, what made you want to take a dip in the bath so late at night anyway? You said before that you came in because you knew I was here. Any special reason? I came to say thanks. Thanks? Thanks for what? I don't feel like I've done anything to deserve being thanked. Sure you have, but I should have known you wouldn't have noticed. You did everything you could to pull through after we split up in Trista, right? And then you came all that way to get us. You even brought Claire, too. To me, you're the only reason all of us are even back together again, you know? Me? The only reason? I think that's a stretch. Besides, it was only because of all of you that I was able to do anything at all. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. But I still think our class is only what it is because of you. You're kind of like our leader in a way. The whole reason we're together again is because you stood up and chose to fight. So, thanks. I... <laughs> <laughs> Aw, you're laughing. I was trying so hard to be all serious and moving for once, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't laughing at you. It just finally hit home that everything Elise said was true. I had no idea that everyone was thinking of me as much as they were, or that so many people were looking out for me. It just made me realize all over again how blind I've been all this time. So I couldn't help but laugh at myself. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're getting at, but hey, as long as you're not laughing at me. Sounds like something you should keep in mind, though. It's true that we're all thinking of you, always. We're bound together in a way that can't be easily broken. Don't worry, I will. And now that we're all together again, I'm sure that one day we'll be able to return to the Academy. As long as we don't give up, I know we can make that a reality. So, let's give it everything we've got. <laughs> you know it!
thought long and hard about it, and I think we as a class need to find a third way. A path of our own, separate from the ones the reformist and noble factions are taking. A third way, you say? I do agree. It wouldn't feel quite right for us to directly support either side. True. We might be military academy students, but we're still students. Involving ourselves in a civil war isn't something we should take lightly. We might have a Divine Knight on our side, but we're still going to need to be very careful how we proceed. Whatever we do, Valimar will certainly be at the center. No doubt. We've all seen how powerful the Divine Knights are. If we use them right, we can intervene in the war as much as we want. They're quite literally beings of legend. However, his potential influence on the war is all the more reason why he will need to be used cautiously. Then, even if we agree on not siding with either of the factions, I'm pretty sure each of us have different stuff we want to do. And different things that we have to do, too. Yeah, that's true. For my part, I need to rescue Elise and Princess Alfin from the Noble Alliance's clutches. Whether it's alone or with you guys, it's something I'll do. There's no way you'll be alone for that. We're with you all the way. I'm concerned about Dad, too, what with them having him under arrest. I still can't get in contact with Fiona either. I'm glad I was able to see Dad, but I'm worried about her. For me, I'm worried about Ruwer as a whole. It's a huge relief to see you're alright, Sharon, but Mother's still unaccounted for. I'm sorry I can't do more to comfort you, my lady. And I have no idea where Father's been for the past month. I'm certain he must be well, but all the same. We're all worried about our families, I see. Hopefully, we can find some information on all of them before the fighting gets any more fierce. Huh. 
I'm certainly not worried about the safety of mine. Although, suffice it to say, if we choose to intervene in the war, conflict with them is all but inevitable. That goes for Zeno and Leo, too. They've been hired by the Noble Alliance, so I'd say it's likely we'll run into them in the future. Plus, Emma and I still need to talk to Vita to see what exactly she's trying to do. To figure out what's so important to her that she was willing to break a taboo to do it. That's true. Whatever you decide to do, you'll have my full support. Just as the warriors of Nord did 250 years ago, I'm determined to fight to protect my second homeland and those who live within it. Oh, same! We can do this! I can back him up, right, Claire? How could I say no? I have my own duties to take care of as part of the Railway Military Police, but I fully intend to support all of you with everything I have. I'm thinking it's about time I return to helping the Guild, actually. But I'll still be in touch with Sarah, so I'm sure I can lend a hand or two anytime you need it. <laughs> Naturally, I'd be overjoyed to continue serving as your dormitory's caretaker. I'm your instructor, so you're stuck with me to the very end. Whatever you choose to do, you'll have my support. You're going to need to decide on a more specific course of action, though. Resolving to find a third way is a start, but only a start. It also leaves plenty of questions that need to be answered on top of it all. Well, then how about this? Let's figure out right now whether or not we want to keep using Ymir as our base of operations. Just so we're clear on this, there's a limit to how many people can use the spirit path at any one time. And with as many people as we have now, I'm not sure how useful it's going to be at this point. And we're limited on how frequently we can use it. Oh, right. But we're also just as limited on where we can go otherwise. We haven't exactly been the most subtle group around. Who's to say we could even operate elsewhere? An astute point. The Noble Alliance will no doubt be even more wary of us than before. In the end, no matter what we decide, we lose. Indeed. Yet we're short on time, so a decision must be made now. There's gotta be something that only we can do. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I know it exists. And I'm sure that we'll find it. The best thing we can do now is keep talking things out until we find a way. There's no point in rushing into a decision. Well, doesn't this look fun? Mind if I join in? What in the world? It couldn't be! Vita? <laughs> it's lovely to see you again, Emma. You were finally able to reunite with all of your classmates. I'm happy for you. Really, I am. The goddess was on your side after all, hmm? Cut the crap, Vita. Have you been listening in all this time? Where are you? <laughs> I'm not far at all. Listen closely now. Th that sounds just like... Is that... It's coming from above us! Isn't that the Noble Alliance Force's flagship? What's the Pantagruel doing here? Damn it! I didn't think she'd tell the rest of their army where we were. But why now? <laughs> why? Because our preparations are finally complete. Vita! Vita! You're here! Yes, I am here. In the flesh. Good day to you all, Class 7. Hmm. As nice as it would be to finally give you a hug, Emma, I wouldn't want to keep our guest of honor waiting any longer. So, without further ado... Long 
time no see, guys. Sorry for dropping in on you like this, but I'm sure you know the drill by now. You ready to have some fun? Is that really you, Crow? There's no doubt about it. See, you damn terrorist! Come on! Right! Heed my call! My call. Valimar! Valimar! At all of this time because at the end of the day he's just an obstacle that needs to be overcome so lend me your power Valimar very well use my power as you see them <laughs> you've really taken to piloting since your last encounter haven't you I was hoping you would and you didn't let me down you boys have so much potential but potential is only that potential and you, Reen, might want to reevaluate just how many obstacles need overcoming. This is bad. Aren't those the Alliance's allies? Long time no see, kiddos. You doing all right, Fee? I see the purple lightning has joined your ranks. Zeno. Leo. Zephyr! And a few members of Ouroboros, too. Guess all the big guys wanted a piece of us today. And look, Sammy's here, too! Kindly stop referring to Clown Soleus with that bizarre nickname. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, it's such a pleasure to visit this Wintry Wonderland once again. Oh, it's a pleasure, all right. The time for my long-awaited revenge has finally come. Now you shall pay! It's only been two days since you first fought them, you know. This could pose a problem. Why send so many powerful allies here? And all at once? <laughs> You've proven to be rather formidable adversaries, after all. It wouldn't do to underestimate you. Rufus! I'm pleased to see you all again, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. As for you, dear brother, I was told that you'd run away from home. It does my heart good to see you safe and sound. So, you've finally gathered up the will to make the difficult choices life set at your feet, I presume. Even if those choices place you in my line of fire? Yes, I have. He's shown up too. The Noble Alliance is pulling out all the stops to finally get rid of us, aren't they? Reen, we'll take care of everything here. You and Valimar have your own battle to fight. Are you sure? <laughs> We're in for a real brawl out here, but a guy couldn't ask for better opponents. Leave the battle on the ground to us. <laughs> We've no intention of backing down without a fight. Wait, Sharon! I know they're all strong, but still... Well, what do we say we get started? Here he comes! I'm impressed. You managed to hold your own better than I expected you to. It's only been a month or so, but you've really grown as an Awakener, Reen. Well, it's hard to go through the kinds of things I have without growing from the experience. And now that I've done all that, I'm going to be the one who takes you down! <laughs> no, you're not. I said you could hold your own, not that you could win. 
Remember, there's still a three-year gap's worth of experience between us. And it's time you realize just how much of an impact that gap has. That's enough, Crow! Do they really stand a chance? Well, they're putting up a good fight so far, but... Yeah, it's not looking good. They're outnumbered, for one thing. Then it's time we lent them our aid. Agreed. Weapons at the ready, guys. Always in a rush, aren't you? Stay right where you are. I'll serve as your opponent today. Y you will? Trying to stop us from joining in? <laughs> I'd rather our intrusion cause as little inconvenience as possible for the people of this village. I'll let you make the first move. It's been quite some time since I last instructed you in fencing, Yersis. I look forward to seeing how you've improved. Wow. His guard's perfect. Stay alert. Rufus is a master of court fencing. We'll need to put all we have into this battle to even stand a chance against him. I would have it no other way. <laughs> well, I won't deny that was an entertaining diversion. But you'd do well to intensify your training regimen if you hope to best me. <sighs> well, how is he so strong? He didn't stand a chance. He might even be stronger than Sarah. Are you guys okay? Hey, you really think you've got time to be worrying about them? You ain't getting out of this one, Green. Alright, bring it on! It's time to settle this, Crow! Settled enough for you? <clears throat> you didn't even bother to use that trump card of yours. Oh, he wasn't even trying last time, then was he? <laughs> Come on. With the way you are now, I don't even need to try. I'll always win. And that ring perfectly illustrates just how massive the gulf between us is. Maybe you think you've had it tough up till now. But you're gonna need to go through a hell of a lot more if you want to even the odds. <sighs> I see the battle here has come to an end. Ah, oh, hey, Via. I can't help but feel a little bummed that everything went exactly as I thought it would. Still, it just goes to show how much faith I have in your skills, my sweet Azure Chevalier. Funny, I don't recall ever becoming yours. How's everything up top? I think it's only a matter of time before the battle is decided. But, we've caused enough trouble for the people of Ymir already. It's about time we brought this to a close. Finestra oh, Phantasma Window. My apologies for not coming down to speak with you in person, ladies and gentlemen of Thor's Military Academy. You know who I am, of course, but I am Duke Kayen, ruler of the Lemaire Province and supreme leader of the Noble Alliance. Duke Kayen? So even the big guy himself is here. <laughs> I must say, what a curious group we have here. I heard as much, but allow me to extend my most heartfelt congratulations. My expectations have thoroughly been exceeded. When I saw young Eusis and Laura in Legram earlier this year, I could never have imagined this is how we would next meet. Oh, I'm sure your parents must have warned you against wandering off with such disreputable individuals on a number of occasions. But I suppose every child thinks that they alone know what is best for themselves. Duke Alborea was simply livid about what happened. But it can't hurt to learn more about the outside world, hmm? 
liquid that leaves his mouth is condescending. Did you come all the way here just to tell us that? Don't be silly, child. Rain Schwarzer. I had this meeting arranged because I wanted to speak with you. Perhaps the method was a touch too garish for something so simple, but do forgive me for not formally requesting an audience. With me? <laughs> with you. Allow me to get right to the point. I wish to invite you, Ashen Chevalier, aboard our flagship. Huh? Wait, why? <laughs> I've heard all about your magnificent exploits across the land. And so I thought it would be nice to sit down and have a long, pleasant chat with you. About the past, the present, as well as your future. Are you suggesting... You... you want Reen to join the Noble Alliance? Should you accept my invitation, we will withdraw peacefully from Ymir. Furthermore, I give you my personal assurance that we will leave this village alone for the duration of this war. A fine proposition, is it not? Are we interested? <sighs> Very well. Allow me to accept your invitation. Don't be an idiot! This is clearly a trap! They wouldn't come all the way out here and take you into their flagship if it weren't. <laughs> I appreciate your concern. A trap or not, this might be a good chance for us, too. I think I'd regret it if I let it pass. Bellamar, transport Celine back outside. Are you certain? N now hold it right there! Don't worry about me. The odds were against all of us getting back together, but we did it. And I'm sure we can do it again, too. So just wait with Emma for now. I'll be back before you know it. Balamar, if you would. Very well. But wait! It seems the time has come for us to part ways once again. But remember this. You're an Alborea. There is power and dignity in that name, to whatever end you would use it. I want you to prove that the convictions you cling to are worthy of your loyalty. Not for my benefit, but for yours. Wait! Lord Rufus! Well met, Lord Schwarzer. It's a pleasure to see you again. Allow me to extend my apologies for the harm my father visited upon this town and its people. Never mind that! What do you intend to do with my son? And what is a promising young man like yourself? We're simply going to borrow young Reen for a short while. There's nothing to worry about. I'm a busy man these days, though, so for now, I bid you adieu.
So this is what Duke Cayenne looks like from up close. It's hard to believe that I've ended up in the same room as the leader of the Noble Alliance. Although, I guess we did meet back in Legram before the war broke out. Reen Schwarzer. Truth be told, we don't want this war to drag on any more than you do. Uh, really? We only acted as we did due in part to our dearly departed Chancellor's behavior being far too unreasonable to justify turning a blind eye. He garnered the trust of His Majesty, and in turn misused that trust. He flagrantly disregarded this nation's beloved culture and traditions, treating Erebonia as if it were his own personal property. Surely you too noticed this. Well... I can't say I disagree. We did hear story after story during our field studies about how aggressive his policies were. About the way he didn't care how many enemies he made as a result, creating terrorist groups like the Imperial Liberation Front. But as I said, the cause of our nation's ills is now gone. Now, all that remains is to turn back the hands of time just a touch, and the good old days of the Empire will be upon us once more. The key to this bright future lies in putting aside our differences and joining hands. Am I wrong? I'm afraid that yes, you are. Do you honestly believe that people can so easily put aside their differences after all the Alliance has done? You occupied Heimdall and effectively took every one of its citizens hostage, imprisoned the Imperial family. And let's not forget how you're now in league with the enemy nation responsible for the destruction of Gorelia Fortress. After all that, the Imperial Army would never bow their heads to the likes of you, even if the rest of the population did. <laughs> My word! I'm afraid there's been a terrible misunderstanding. The Imperial family is simply under our loving protection. They certainly haven't been imprisoned. But that does bring me to exactly why I want you to help us. It does? The Azure Knight is already on our side. But if we had your Ashen Knight as well, that would mean we'd have two of the great knights of Erebonian legend to put into play. Couple them with our Panzer Soldats, and the Imperial Army's armored divisions would cower before us. You may not find us winning the war ideal, but this union benefits everyone more than carrying on until our inevitable victory, hmm? I don't think it's that simple. I beg to differ. The presence of Soldat's units on a battlefield makes a tremendous difference. What they may lack in firepower and armor compared to tanks, they make up for in mobility and versatility. But more important than even those factors is the psychological impact they have on our opponents. Well... We're only human. As such, we are as captivated as we are terrified of giant beings bearing human form. And if that holds true even for mass-produced soldats made with modern technology, it will be all the more true for the divine knights of legend you and Crow possess. Can't argue with that logic. <sighs> I will say it once more. Giliath Osborne is dead. With his death, all that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant Academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. <gasps> Are you trying to? Whatever you ultimately decide, their safety is guaranteed. I would ask that you promise him this, if nothing else, Your Grace. <laughs> but of course, I'm not a monster. Rufus. We may stand on opposite sides of this conflict, but I still sit on Thor's board of directors. And in that capacity, I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer.
All that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. It's hard to argue that this war began because the noble faction went too far. But the longer it goes on, the more people are going to suffer. Am I really okay with that? If I join them, I could reduce the number of victims, be friends with Crow again, free Elise and Princess Elfin. No, this isn't that simple. Think, Green, think. I was able to reunite with the others, but Elise and Princess Elfin are still in the Alliance's custody. What's the best thing I can do? This isn't just about me. What do all of us want to do? <laughs> Keep racking your brain like that and smoke will start coming out of your ears. What do you want? Hey, now. No need to give me that look. I figured I was gonna find you busy thinking everything over like your life depended on it. And what do you know? I was right. How about you mind your own damn business? Don't you have better things to do with your time? You figured the glorious Azure Chevalier would be far too busy with the war to be hanging out around here. <laughs> it's tough being popular. If you joined us, I could get away with doing half the work I am now. So come on, stop freaking out about it so much and make a choice. This isn't something I can just decide by flipping a coin, Crow! And besides, it'd probably be an easier choice if not for a certain someone... What's that in your hand, anyway? Grub, of course. Kinda early, but I brought you your lunch. Mind if I join you? Hamburgers, fries, and onion rings, huh? I was expecting something more fancy like I had last night. Oh, that kind of food more your thing? Okay then, give me a minute while I go ask the chef to whip something up. No, this is fine. The burger looks delicious. Cool, all right, dig in. This tastes kind of different from a normal burger. Oh, no wonder. It's got whitefish in it. Yeah, they're called fish burgers. Pretty good, right? Yeah, the tartar sauce makes for an unusual extra flavoring, too. Oh. Hmm, this tastes amazing. I like this way more than the food I had last night, to be honest. Well, glad to hear. Guess it was worth putting my cooking skills to the test after all. Wait, you made this? Was my first time cooking in a while, too. Sharon could probably do better, though. But I wanted to give it a shot anyway. This stuff was like soul food back in Dry, where I grew up. Oh. To think, all the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust, from the Dry SEZ. Oh, yeah, Vita was using some weird thing of hers to let you see what was going on, wasn't she? So I guess you saw what happened there. Yeah. Jirai was that special economic zone in the Northwest you guys went to during our August field study, too. We didn't run into anything like that in the Jirai special economic zone. Though, I guess that makes sense seeing as it's under the direct control of the Imperial government and not a noble. I seem to recall that it was annexed eight years ago, is that right? So you ended up going back to your old hometown then? Yeah, by pure coincidence. It's changed a lot since I was last there, so it was kind of surreal being back again. But it was nostalgic in its own way too. It's been bugging me for a long time now. What could have made you want to join a group of terrorists like the Imperial Liberation Front? 
What was it that made you hate Chancellor Osborne that much? Enough to take his life? Oh. Tell me, Crow, please. I want to know what it was that made you who you are now. What kind of place Jirai was, how you lived there, and what you were doing before you entered the Academy and met Toa, Angelica, and George. <laughs> Where's the fun in prying into a guy's past? Save all that talk for your number one in class. Who's the lucky girl anyway? Elisa? Laura? Emma? Fee? And don't tell me it's Milliam, because, you know, it... I'm serious, Crow. I really want to know. Think of telling me your past is paying off the interest you owe in that 50 Mira. Because until I know, until we know, we won't be able to move forward. You're really serious. Crow? My past really isn't that big of a deal, you know. It's got nothing on yours, that's for sure. If you find yourself thinking that's all when I'm done, well, I warned you. So, you really want to know? Yeah. Nothing you say will change my mind. Please, tell me. <sighs> Alright, you win. Like I said, it's just your run-of-the-mill sob story. Pick up any history textbook and you'll probably find a dozen others just like it. It's the kind of story that's so common no one bothers to remember it, like it never even happened. Back in those days, Jirai was known as Jirai City. It was a city-state off the coast of northwest Zemuria that prospered through maritime trade with West Erebonia, North Ambria, and Remiferia. It had a population of around 150,000 people, so it wasn't exactly a big place or anything. Because of that, the surrounding nations left it alone and let us live out our days in peace. We were pretty fortunate, all things considered. Until about 20 years ago. That was when the North Ambrian disaster struck, and much of the Principality of North Ambria was turned to salt. And as a result, trade on the Northwest Shore was reduced to virtually nothing. Day after day, Jirai's prosperity started to fade away. Still, it wasn't all bad. We had our fishing, our historic landmarks, our septia mines. We could make use of those to get trade going again, both to keep our state running and to help out North Ambria. In fact, the one who advocated that approach was the mayor, my grandfather. He was the last mayor Jirai City ever had. <laughs> he was a stubborn old bastard, but he had this wry sense of humor and was well loved by everyone. I lost my mom and dad early, so he was also my only living relative. <laughs> he taught me just about everything a guy could know. He was like a mom, dad, and your old master rolled into one, I guess. Anyway, fast forward to ten years ago. Out of nowhere, we received this proposal from the Erebonian government. They said they wanted to extend a railway line from Heimdall all the way to Jirai. We relied on the sea for trade before, but there wasn't any reason to believe we couldn't benefit from being connected to Heimdall by rail. The proposal drew overwhelming support from the city's council, and as a result, my grandfather was forced to accept. Within a year, the city had all of its old life back and then some. The streets were more bustling than ever. But keep in mind, this was a result of huge amounts of imperial capital flowing into the city. Land and buildings we once treasured were bought up left and right. Everything became a target for investment. People only cared about making money. Something similar supposedly happened in Crossbell too, but unlike there, no opposition existed in Jirai. My grandfather sensed something was off, and he tried what he could to get the situation under control. Then one day, someone blew up the railway line leading to Jirai. Everyone demanded that it be repaired as quickly as possible. Everyone except the imperial government. Instead, they panned our national security arrangements for being insufficient and threatened to withdraw all imperial capital. The city was left in an uproar like we'd never seen. Shares plummeted, and with no one able to ascertain the culprit's identity, chaos reigned. That was when he showed up. Chancellor Gilead Osborne, in his third year as representative of the Imperial government, personally came to Jirai. We then received a second proposal. The restoration of the railway and its future security 
will be seen to by the Imperial Army. In return for our continued assistance and safekeeping, Jirai will come under the wing of our glorious empire and attain even greater prosperity as a special economic zone. The timing was too good to be true, really. Realizing this, my grandfather staunchly opposed the idea. He tried everything he could to convince the city's council to reject the offer. Unfortunately, once you taste the sweet fruit of prosperity, it's hard to want to go back. The council, made up of influential merchants and all their greed, jumped at the offer. And tempted by the elimination of customs, together with the tax breaks from being an SEZ, many of the citizens did too. And during all that, they'd conveniently found a suspect behind the railway incident, my grandfather. He loved Jirai more than anyone, and up till then, its people loved him too. And yet, virtually overnight, he found himself facing the wrath of both the city's council and the citizens alike. Left with no choice, he resigned from his position as mayor, and Jirai formally became part of the empire. Both of these things happened on the same exact day. That was eight years ago. Naturally, everyone knew my grandfather wasn't the one who did it. They knew who was really responsible. They just turned a blind eye to the truth. See, I warned you. Just your run-of-the-mill sob story. I don't know what to say, Crow. Uh, what happened to him after that? Your grandfather. One day, he just up and died. Once he resigned, the whole affair with the railway getting blown up was all but forgotten. He lived comfortably in retirement for about half a year, fell ill, and that was that. He just lost the will to go on, I guess. Like I said, he was the only family I had. I mean, I had plenty of friends even then, but I chose to leave it all behind. I was 13 at the time. I wandered the land, doing whatever I had to to get by. That was when I met old Kayan, who happily indulged my hatred for the Chancellor. And with his financial backing, I went out with the goal to find others who were just like me. That was the beginning of the Imperial Liberation Front. Gideon, Scarlet, and Vulcan were among those I recruited. I had also met Vita then. I only knew her as the woman who would often come to see Kayan. She guided me to a place below the city of Ordis, and there slept the Azure Knight Ordeen. One after another, I overcame the same trials you did with your friends, but alone. And once I'd proven myself worthy, Ordeen accepted me as his awakener. That was three years ago. I was 16. My preparations complete, I concealed my background and enrolled in a military academy near the capital. Everything I did, I did for the sole purpose of taking the Chancellor's head. Come on now, what's with the face? You look sadder about all this than I do. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I swear. I'm not trying to tell you the Chancellor was evil or anything. What? Still, there's no denying that he managed to outwit my grandfather. And he may have lost, but Pops always loved a good gamble. It's thanks to him that I'm pretty good at chess, card games, that kind of stuff. I'd say it's fairly normal for a student to want to avenge his master's defeat, wouldn't you? Maybe. At the end of the day, there's no denying this country has problems, and the Chancellor's methods were making them worse. I studied those problems, worked out how to use the situation to my advantage, and then won the game with an all-or-nothing gamble. But when you think of how peaceful Jirai is now, I'd say I've got a duty to clear up the mess left behind by my game too, which means ending this war and restoring peace. So it's only when that's done that my game is truly over. <sighs> I don't want whatever your decision is to be influenced by my past, okay? Like Rufus said, you need to think long and hard about what it is you're fighting for. For you, more than anyone else. Yeah, but... Crow... 
Anyway, I think I've stuck around here for long enough. You're going to be treated as a visitor. Well, sort of. It's about time for the higher-ups to head back to Heimdall, so go ahead and pass the time however you want. However I want? What else can I even do here? There'll be no guards outside your room, so if you want to try and escape, be my guest. Just keep in mind that some members of Ouroboros and Zephyr are on board too. Not to mention me, Scarlet, and Vulcan. So if you're up for a gamble of your own, get ready to take all of us on. Sounds fun. Oh yeah, one more thing. There's this real cute visitor in the guest of honor's room on the second floor. I think she'd perk right up if she saw you, so why not go pay her a visit? Just don't go making your girl jealous, okay? I wonder who he means. He said she's in the guest of honor's room. Well, I can't waste much time here. I told everyone I'd definitely come back soon. Right now, I need to gather as much information as I can. I can make my choice after that. At least then, it'll be an informed one. <laughs> <laughs> 